I know you're all watching. I'll be there in one minute. I'm trying to be efficient and by seven o'clock have it up on my iPad so that I can. Oh, there we are. Yay. Okay. Oh, just in time. Have it up on my iPad so that I can. Let me turn this down. Oh, there we are. Okay. I'm going to flip you around. Ah, hi -oh. On time, and I'm all ready. I've got my iPad going. So, an FYI, any questions you have, ask them. If I get a chance, I will answer them as we're going, if I see them. If I don't, if I don't, I'll go back afterwards and I will um, answer all your questions. So, thank you all. Thank you all for coming. Hello, everybody. Um, tonight we're going to do, we're going to work in fluid acrylics, which is a whole new thing, but um, I'll explain them as we go. Okay. I'm going to flip you around, and it is 7 o'clock. I'll give it like two more minutes. Substitute for burnt umber. In fluid acrylics. Hi, Marie. Hi, Janet. Hey, Deb. Uh, let's see who else. Hey, Nanette. All right, so I'm going to flip you around. There is no substitute for burnt umber. Use burnt umber in acrylics. That's going to be for the center of the flower. Okay, I'm going to pop you around. I'm going to put you on my stand. And we should have it. Oh, you don't want to see that now, do you? There we go. Good job, right? I think we got it. Okay, so there's a couple of things. I haven't seen, let me see, I think I have to swipe left. There we go. Okay. So, what we're gonna do is the first thing we're gonna do is we start just like this, just base coated. We're gonna create our background. Now, when I originally designed this piece, which is this one, I used an image transfer background. So what that is, is that's, an image transfer paper it's called and the design is on the paper you put it this way you rub you let it dry with a special medium and then you kind of rub it off and then the backgrounds there but for this because you need time to do that also so for this I created a background with stamps and it's a fun background and there's so much to learn in this and then we'll move on and we're gonna work in fluid acrylics so the fluid acrylics look like this. They're little bottles and they're pigmented and they're transparent. So they have a lot of pigmentation to them and they will stay transparent. So they're a lot of um, fun and they are fabulous. So let's get started. I'm gonna move this over so you can see the light just a little bit better. That light should be better. Okay, so when I stamp with paint, I'm going to use wax paper. Now, a couple of things. I don't put paint directly on my stamp. So I'll not take my brush and do this because what happens is your paint will get into your little crevices and then you'll have a big blob of paint. So when I do it, and I know everybody does it differently, I take a piece of wax paper and I kind of just, if the paint would come out, I'm using burnt, I'm using Espresso, Decor Now this is regular bottled acrylics and I'm using Espresso. Can you see that? Okay. And I'm gonna brush it out. 
Now I have a decent amount, but I don't have, okay, so here's where I poured it out. So you can see there's a bigger puddle. Can you see that? And I brushed it out there. So there's enough there that I can pick it up and I'm going to take my stamp and I'm going to dip it in. So I have a lot less paint than if I'm putting it on, okay? Now I'm just gonna come to my surface and I'm gonna randomly stamp. And I'm upside down. Now you can put as much or as little, excuse me, as you want. I have spots where I have stamping. Now if you start to get too light and you don't wanna be light, just go back in and just stamp again. Okay, I don't wanna cover the whole thing. It's not wrong to cover the whole thing. You can cover the whole thing. That is 100% a personal preference. Okay, so then, move that out of the way, I'm making a mess. Now I've used, if you look, can you see where all the paint is off of there? You can see where I took it off. So I'll just brush out some more. And I haven't put my brush in water yet, simply because I need it for a couple of things. And I'm going to do a dragonfly. Okay. If you get it here, just pull it off, only so it doesn't get on your surface. But you see how I put it on there? And I have my dragonfly. It's a little messy trying to stay in the camera, sorry. Right in here. So all I'm going to do is take my dragonfly and I'm going to position it wherever I want it. And I'm just going to press and I'm going to lift. You see that? Now I can see little areas where I'm heavy, which I'm okay with. It doesn't bother me. But before I do the next step, I have to make sure they're dry. So the same way you tell if your acrylic is dry is you will be able to tell on this. If you're shiny, you're not dry. So let me quickly while I'm doing this, I'll scroll over. Now your stamps, I'll leave it to the end of class. Your stamps, I have no idea. Oh, there's the comments. Your stamps can sit till tonight. I'll clean them after class. So what I'll do is I'll take an old toothbrush from the dollar store and I'll just put some Dawn liquid detergent on it and then I'll just wash them. It'll come right off. Okay. So that's how you clean that. So I'm not worried about cleaning them now. I'll clean them later. Hi everybody. Thank you all for coming. If you have questions, please just ask. I am happy, happy, happy to answer them. And I'll go back after class for anybody who came in later and I will answer them all. So if you go back and paint it later or you paint it again, your answers will be there without having to find them on the video. This video will be on the library website, uh, library Facebook page. Go under the live tab and scroll down and it will be there. Everyone that we've done so far is still up, so I don't know if they take them down or not, but at least the ones since we started, I think in April, are there. We do two a month. Okay, so now I can see it's dry. Now, if you look, uh, let me show you this one. This, this one is a bit ahead. Okay, see the difference in the coloring? This was too bright for me with the sunflower. So I'm gonna take, now we're gonna control this color with our water. So 
So you decide how dark you want it to be. As you're doing this, have a clean paper towel handy. Okay, because you're gonna have to immediately do it. So grab a nice clean paper towel, your big three quarter inch wash, some clean water. Don't panic, okay? Deep breath. If you've never done this, deep breath. We'll come in and I'm gonna, same color, and I'm gonna water it down because I don't want it super dark. If you want it darker, use it full strength. You must work fast, okay? And you see how I'm going, on? I know. People panic over this, <laughs> don't panic over it. Okay, as long as you're working fast enough, you'll be fine. Make sure you have enough water in your brush. See how it's kind of liquidy? Before it dries, take your paper towel and just wipe it down. What this is called is this is called antiquing. So anything you paint, you can antique. So I made this one lighter than this, than this one. This had more water in it, this had more paint in it, okay? Either is fine. It is not a wrong versus right issue. It's simply what you like, okay? So now I took it from my really bright light buttermilk and I toned it down with an antiquing. So you can do a whole painting and then say, oh, I want it to look old, which I do often when I do flags or something of that sort that you want. And just antique the whole thing. If you're uncomfortable, get yourself some matte medium, brush the whole thing, let it dry, and then if you don't like it, you can take a baby wipe and take it off, okay? Then you're done with this paint. So we all antiqued, and because you wiped it off, you're dry. Okay, which makes it a great piece. Okay. I feel like I'm talking very quickly tonight. If I'm talking too quickly, just let me know. Okay. Hey, Bet. Hey, Betty. Oh, there's so many of you here. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. I hope you're painting with me. If you're painting along with me and you have questions even after, just message me. And also, which would make me so happy, if after you paint it, send me a picture, or better yet, just take a picture and post it on the library website so that they know how wonderful I am. <laughs> Don't tell them I said that. Although my boss is kind of here. But seriously, take a picture and send it to them so that they know um, how wonderful we are doing. All right, so now I'm gonna take my line drawing and I'm gonna place it over my surface. You're gonna take your graphite, which I usually do this in beginner, but I'll go through it. There's a dull side, there's a shiny side. FYI, Graphite can be used over and over and over again. You can see how many times I've used it and gotten paint on it. But you, it's not a one-time use. This will last you a really long time. Hold your finger in the corner and lift. Slide it under and transfer your pattern. Now, if you need your stroke works, put them in. And just, I don't worry about the border but if you need the border, you can put that in after or you can put it in before. Press a little hard if it's not new, simply because you have the pattern underneath. So the pattern doesn't always show well. You know, it stops the graphite paper from coming through. So what I'll do is I'll just lift 
and make sure it's there. Now, I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it at that angle? It's light, but it's there. Okay. Oh, you can see it. Oh, Emily, I hope you're feeling good. And I'm glad you're here watching. There's always something to learn. Okay, you're all up to where I'm up to. We're going to work in fluid acrylics. The rest of this piece, the only thing that I had done on this entire piece was the um, background in bottled acrylics. Everything else is going to be fluid acrylics. On fluid acrylics, there's a couple of things. They're transparent, they're highly pigmented, and they are, they're little bottles, but you use so little of them. So you're gonna get a different color. I'll show you how we're gonna control them. But I'm gonna base coat this whole sunflower. So I'm gonna come in, and I'm just gonna put a tiny bit. And if I was shading and highlighting, I literally put one drop as if I was using an eyedropper. Okay, I'm gonna take my brush. I use a flat brush, so in this case it's a 12. I think I put a 10 on the list. Now, when you're base coating with fluid acrylics, you're going to control the intensity of your color with your water, so if you want a lot of color, you're gonna use it. Now I'm using Darylide Yellow, sorry. If you want a heavy color, you're going to use it straight from the bottle. It's still gonna be transparent because all of this paint is transparent. Okay, see that? If I want it very light, I'm gonna use a lot of water. Now see how much water I have here? I have as much water as I have paint. And I'm gonna come in, and you see the difference? Now that, this is straight, and this is with water in it. This is completely controlled by how much water you put in it. One is not right, one is not wrong. If you want a more intense color, use it straight. If you want it lighter, use it with water. Okay, so I'm here. And I'm just, just like if you're base coating, and if in some cases you want it, like when you do your rim, I did that it, I did it with two coats so that I made it more opaque and darker. Okay, and I'm just picking up look, little bits of paints. And I'm coming in. And I'm just base coating. Now keep in mind, your graphite lines are a guide. Usually when there's paint over them, if you paint over them, they're there with fluid acrylics, and I won't swear to it, but I have found, and it's every time I've done it, that any time I've needed to erase a line under fluid acrylics, it will come off. Okay. I'm not concerned if I go to the edge or I don't, because the brown will be there, and if I go here, the brown will cover it. Okay. I feel very quiet. I have nobody to talk to. And all I'm doing is base coating. Now, I'm almost dry up here. These dry very quickly. They're transparent. The color will last. They have fabulous color in them. Okay. So 
So now I'm base coated. Okay. Now I have, I had one up to this point. So I have a darker one and a lighter one. Now you can see the difference in the coloring on the two backgrounds. This yellow looks darker. This yellow looks a little lighter. I probably had a little bit more light uh, water in my brush. Okay. Goodness gracious, none of you have had any questions all night. Well, thank you all for being here. I know I say that a lot, don't I? But I really do appreciate it. Okay. So. I'll just dry this for a second. And simply because, hopefully, those of you painting along, and I know some of you are because you've asked me questions beforehand, those of you that are painting are at the same point as this one versus the next one. Now this piece can be done, this design can be done on any surface. So if you wanted to do it on a canvas, just line the edges up with a canvas. If you want to do it, and it'll look really pretty because I'm going to do a sunflower this way, which is a really pretty piece too. And happy fall, it's fall now. Hi, Dolores. Are you painting? I hope you're all painting. I have to keep you all practicing. Okay. So, I'm real dry. And it's the same thing. You can tell. You won't see the same shine as you will with a bottled acrylic. So, if you paint in bottled acrylic, keep in mind, a bottled acrylic will be more opaque and it's much thicker okay now I base coated this whole piece remember how much I put out I used like none of it so keep in mind you need these bottles will probably last you for a very very long time if not forever there are oh don't quote me I think 38 colors get colors if you're going to get them just get colors that you'll use and then add to them as you go but just about every design I do I add fluid acrylics to because of the high pigment in them okay we all ready we're going to shade quinacridone burnt orange which is not really an orange it's like a reddish brown if you don't have quinacridone or you're doing it in bottled acrylics you can use heritage brick you can use I told Janet something you could use burnt sienna you can use mm, something in that family dark red okay so when I put this out I'm literally going to put one drop. And that, I just did this, drop, and up. And I will still have some left. And if you need more, you take more. But this way, you use so little of this paint. Now, keep in mind, when you shade, you want to push down the bottom and you want to pull up the top edge so on these petals I want to push down here because this petal is under this petal and this petal is under this petal if you have a full edge and this is how you know with anything if you have a full edge you know it's on top so if this were on top this would be a full edge but it's not a full edge because it stops. So often that'll help you to understand where you're floating. So we're gonna float, we're gonna shade our separations. So when we float, we wet, blot, load, blend, 
the oil shouldn't have had a float. Okay. Now, when I blended, there's the color of the quinacridone burnt orange. Sorry, I was doodling. <laughs> okay, you see that? It's a very red color. And I'm going to shade on the bottom petal in the shape of the top. So I'm going to come here and go here. I must have reinforced them. If you need to mop, mop. Mm, I think that's too orange. Add a tiny bit of burnt umber to it. So you can just brush mix between the two. Or we can go back and we can reinforce in burnt umber. So if you're ahead of me, don't worry about it. I'm just going to pick up both. Blend it out. There you go. And what the burnt umber did is it toned it down a bit. There you go. But burnt umber itself is going to be very brown. So what you're doing between the two colors, you're making um, a burnt sienna type color. Now, while I know that this petal is on top of this, if I float here, I'm going to pull this off because it's wet. So I tend to walk, I keep going around, and I'll go here. My brush is perfectly flat on my surface. I'm not lifting the corner of my brush. I'll flip around. Quinacridone, burnt orange, burnt umber. I'm just tipping between the two. And I am floating. When I float, never ever float with less than a 12. Okay. Ay, ay, ay. Sorry. I have two phones in here. Um, never less than a 12. Because you tend to... Um, get too wide on the brush. So it's all in how you load the corner of your brush. Okay, so I just put, I don't know if you can see this, probably not, just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit on the corner there. So my paint comes to about here, and my water comes from here all the way over. And I'm perfectly flat, and that gives me a graduation of color. And some nights, you float better than others. And you see how I'm going into the center? That's no big deal, because we haven't done the center, and we will do the center. Oh, yes, you can use transparent red iron oxide for quinacridone. Alizarin crimson, that is what I told you, Janet. <laughs> yes, use alizarin and just touch it in a little bit of burnt umber. But if you were, okay, so listen to me. If you are using bottled acrylics, so if you're using Americana, use both in Americana. You can put fluid acrylics over Americana, but don't mix the two because one is transparent and one is opaque. So if you're going to use alizarin, use alizarin and burnt umber both in Americana. And water them down a bit. Hmm. Did I draw that one weird? This one is here. I think I have an extra petal in here. Imagine that. So we'll come in. So if you have an extra petal. No, I don't. I see what I did. But if you went and you drew an extra petal, that's no big deal. Okay, so now I'll look, and I'm pretty dry. So now I'll hold it this way, but I'm still going to start up here because I'm not dry here. 
and I'm going to blend out well. Okay. And now I'll come and separate these. Now when I separate these, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk across the bottom so that I've now shaded the bottom of this petal. So I don't have a V here. I almost have a U, if that makes sense. Because when you see the bottom of a petal, it will be a U. It won't be a V. You don't want sharp lines in anything, be it petals, be it um, leaves, be it branches. You don't want sharp lines. Okay, so I come down to separate. Now remember, I'm on the back petal, not on, and then I'm rounding it out. My front petal that has the whole edge. That's not touched, not yet. We are pushing down the back petals. So dark makes the item recede, light brings it towards us. So when we use a darker color, we want to push down the area we're working on. Shading is using a darker value. Highlighting is using a lighter value. If you forget, think highlighting is lighter. That's how I try to remind everybody. Okay, and then I'm here, and I'm gonna separate, and I'm gonna round out. Now you see how I just gave that all that dimension. Here, I'll do it this way because I think that that's the way you need to see it. You're on a delay from me. So I think you're at 15 seconds or something. So I don't see what I'm doing until, um, until you do it. Okay, so now I look and I'm dry. And you could touch it and make sure. So I'm dry. Now, when I look at this, I always say, what do I need to push down? What do I need to pull up? What I need to push down is my petals because my center is on top of my petals. Okay? So what I'm going to do is the same way I did here. Think of you. I'm going to shade the base of each petal. Now I know some people just do this outside the center. And because we're on Facebook Live and I can't see you, you can do it. But that's not the way you do it. Because you have to remember the correct way to do it is every petal is its own entity. It's, it's not one petal going behind the center. They're all separate. So I'll come in and I'm outside and I'm here, but this is not the right shape. So remember what I said, make it a U and round it up. Okay. Now I mop it a little cause I'm a little messy, but I've always been a little messy. And because I'm messy, I work from the back out. So background first, my back petals, my center will be done after because then I can come in and clean up. If I did my center first, then I have to be careful. And it's not that you can't do it, you absolutely can do it. I just find it easier to not have to clean up after myself. So you can see, I have a very separate petal here. I have a very separate petal here. So now I'll come in and first I create and then I come in and I shade the base.
and I'll work my way right around. And you can start to see that once I get that center in there, now, before I lose my train of thought, this shading, which is outside the base of each petal, outside the center, make it wide. You have to make it wide because what happens is when you tap in your center, you're going to need to go onto the petal so that it doesn't look like it connects. So if your center came to here and your paint came to here, it would look like it connected. You don't want that. What you're going to want is you're going to want it to look like it's on top and pulling all your petals together. Okay, so you want to go wide enough that when you, um, sorry, that when you tap in your center, and I'll show you here, when you tap in your center, which I went over a little bit, I can still see my shading. So I can still see that my petals are pulling together underneath my center, okay? So that's important. Make sure you go wide enough to carry the center. That's what I call it. We call it. You call it. We all talk like Linda. Okay. Oh, look, that's a bad shape. That line right there on my stamp is throwing me off. I keep thinking it's another petal. So just watch if you have those lines. And I gave you, I told you what stamps I used. Whatever stamps you want to use are fine. If you chose to use stencils, that's fine. If you chose a plain background, that's fine. If you chose to use stencil or you chose to use a plain background, just when you're out, if you have no stamps, pick up a stamp, even if you, you find them in the dollar store or whatever, and just try to stamp with acrylic, even if you do it on paper, so that you learn the technique to do it. Because that's an important lesson. You know, you can learn how to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna dry for a second. And you see how I've just created all that depth? Okay. Now, I am now starting to see which petals are on top and which petals are on bottom. So, remember when I said light, dark makes the item recede, light brings it towards us. You floated the flower with two different colors. Is that a question, Emily, or is that a statement? What I did, and this is what I think you're asking me, I did not do quinacridone burnt orange first and then burnt umber. What I did is I put them both on the brush at the same time. So when I loaded my brush, and I think this is what you're asking me, I picked up a little bit of the conacridone and a little bit of the burnt umber. And then on my scrap paper, you can see that's when I blended it out. So I kind of made myself a burnt sienna. Okay, I think that's what you're asking me. I did not use one color and then the other color. So if that's not what you're talking about or not what you're asking me, just comment what it is and I will answer you. Okay, so now I'm going to use Hansa Yellow Light and Titanium White. And I'm going to do the same thing. When you use two colors on a brush, it's called a brush mix. If you use a color and then you don't clean your brush and you move to the next color, it's called a dirty brush. So, and I have too much paint. I put out too much white. But you see, I put out less quinacridone than I did the Hansa Yellow, and I still have some left. Same thing with the Burnt Umber. So you see how little you use? 
you use so little paint when you're using fluid acrylics. Okay. Yes, the question. Did I answer your question? Okay. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use a brush mix. I'm going to pick up a little bit of Hansa Yellow, and I'm on the same brush, my floating brush, and a little bit of Titanium White. So they are... Well, you can't see them both on my brush. But when I blend, I got myself a nice light yellow. See that? And I blend it out. Now, remember what I said, dark makes the atom recede, light brings it towards us. So now you have to think, we're gonna start with our top edges. So this is a full edge, so this is on top of this. So I'm going to float from the center, and I'm gonna come up, and I'm gonna pull that petal up. Now, when I'm floating, it's a full stroke. It's not a partial stroke. I'm not doing, wait a minute, let me load this and I'll show you. Yellow, white, doesn't matter if you do yellow, white, or white, uh, yellow first or white first. If you do yellow first, you'll be lighter though. I'm not doing this, let me get here. See how I'm lifting my brush? You will have all these choppy marks. It's one stroke. You want to come back over it in one stroke, that's fine, but it's one stroke. I'm mopping a lot tonight. Tis not my finest floating night. So if you see, I'm going around first this way, the same way I shaded, and I'm floating my top edges. Now you see how white that is? That's too white for me. So I'm just going to pick up some yellow on the brush. I'm going to blend it out. So the fourth step of my wet blot, load blend, fourth step of my float. And then I'll just go over it. And you see how I toned it down? I don't want bright white. Okay? You don't want a bright white float because it'll stick out. Okay? So, and remember, you're using Hansa Yellow Light, not the Darylide Yellow. Okay. I'm going all the way around again. I don't know. I'm on a white mode tonight, I guess. So, just pick up yellow, and I'll tone it. There you go. And it will fade. So, see, when it's wet, it's this, and when it's dry, it's this. So, it'll fade a bit. These colors are super pigmented so they will um, give you fantastic color no matter which of these fluid acrylics you use every color is as beautiful as the next they will give you absolutely beautiful color every single time And you can paint a whole piece in bottled acrylics and then just add this to it. You know, pump up your lights and your darks and add some tints and things like that. You don't have to do the whole piece in fluid acrylics. This piece I did do in fluid acrylics. So now I can see there's a shine here, but there's no shine here, so I'm okay. Now I'll go back on the big petals and I'll float. Same color combination, brush mix of yellow, Hansa Yellow Light, and Titanium White. And I'll pull up the other side. So now I've pulled this petal off of this one and this one. You see what I'm doing? I'm pulling it. It's above this. It's above this. This is above this. That was a mistake a minute ago, which I do make. Okay, so I'll continue through them. Here. And once you get to know your brush, and you'll know if you have to reload, until you know if there's still paint on there, just reload your brush. Okay, 
reload every time. Wet, blot, load, blend. And then I'm here. So now you can see I've pulled these top petals off of here. So you see that depth? Uh, that, well, the depth. Okay. So now what I want to do is I look at these back petals. Because they're pushed down here, they're kind of flat. So I can't really pick up the sides because then that's going to be pulling them up. And I want these to be up. So I just want to tilt the tip. See the tip of the petal? I just want to tilt that up so that now it looks like it's bending, that it's not flat. Some same brush mix of Hansa and Titanium White. And instead of going up against the edge, watch what I'm doing. My brush is with my point. And I'm here. And I'm going across. And you see how I'm I'm not going up this side and down this side. I'm going across the tip. And I'm pulling the tip up. Just the tip. Don't go down too far. I start on the side and I come across. And if you have to mop, mop. Tonight is a lesson in mopping too because generally I don't mop. Tonight, I am mopping. And you mop when you need to blend your paint. And my floats have not... Oh, there's a good float. Okay, so I don't have to mop that. Now yeah, that little bit. This one, I'm not going to... Well, let's do it. But I'm not going to see it because it's going to be under the band that I'll paint around it. Then I have this one. And you can do this with any, well, you can do this with anything. I tend to do a lot of flowers, as Debbie will tell you. I love my flowers. Next month is not a flower. November is not a flower. And December won't be a flower. Or January. I have to start doing more flowers. Okay, so I'm across here. And now I've taken my whole flower and I've totally changed it. So do you see what I did? I went from this, I separated. So now I've brought this petal up and I've pushed this one down. I don't know if you can see both. As soon as my delay is off, we can see. Now I'm on better. Let me see if it moves over. Yeah, I just moved you over. Okay, so I've just separated with a float. Then I highlighted my top edges. And that pulled that petal off of the petal behind it. Whatever petal it happened to be. And then I highlighted the tips. Now this is not up the side, this is across. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's across, okay? As opposed to up the side. And that highlighted the tips and that gave me more dimension that way. Okay, now, something that's real important, when you shade and highlight, all my shading is the same, so this is as dark as this, and this is as light as this. So, tonight I'm only going to reinforce once. Often I reinforce a lot. So I'm going to go to the Burnt Umber, and I want to push down the deepest areas. So the deepest areas are my separations. Right? So I'm going to float 
my separations. Now, you see the difference? So you see the difference to how this pops up and how this pops up? It's a big difference. But if I reinforced, every, like if I reinforced here also, then it's all just going to go. We want some of it to be darker than the other, so it's pushed down more than another area. Does it matter if you pull from here to here or here to here? No. When you're floating, in this case, sometimes it matters. Where you put your brush down will be the widest spot of your stroke. So when you're doing stroke work, it matters. When you're doing this, it does not matter. So wherever you're comfortable. And if you notice, I keep moving my piece to where my hand's comfortable. Move your piece to where your hand's comfortable. Do not try to move your hand like this and keep your piece stationary. Move your piece to where your hand's comfortable. You want your stroke, whenever you're stroking anything, whether you're using a liner, whether you're using a float, whether you're base coating, whatever you're doing, you want it to feel natural. You don't want it to be unnatural. Because if it's unnatural, it doesn't feel right. And if it doesn't feel right, your stroke never looks right. Okay? So, I'm going to go and I'm going to do these separations too. So when I do that, you will see how different my back, now remember, these are our back pedals, okay? Now watch this. Look at how much further back this pedal looks than this one, okay? So I really push that back. So here we have the center. These petals are behind the center, but because this is so much darker, these petals are behind these petals. Okay, so now I'm creating layers of depth as opposed to just depth. Okay, the more intricate your piece gets, the more layers you put. So if I were doing a bigger piece, I might put three or four or five layers of reinforcing. Reinforcing goes much faster. You see how fast I just did? I don't even have to mop. Hmm. Maybe my luck is turning tonight. So you see how I've just changed. I don't have to do that one. I just changed the whole piece. You see that? I keep saying I'm out of camera. Just be patient with patient with me because I do see when I'm out of camera, but because I'm on a delay, it just takes me a couple of minutes. Okay? So I've just created all of my petals. All I have done is I base coated, and remember, water will control the intensity of your fluid acrylics. I've shaded where I want to push down. So the base of each petal plus the separations. I've highlighted my top petals and I did that to pull them up. And I went back and I reinforced just the separations because I want those to be deeper than here so that it has more depth. Okay, so a few, the same technique, but just a few strokes I've gone from this. I gotta turn it this way, don't I? I've gone from this to this. Okay? Same technique. I've floated the whole way. Okay? All right. We're moving right along tonight. Is everybody where I am? Does anybody have any questions about where I am? No? Yes? Nobody's talking to me tonight. Okay. So, when we do our center, I'm going to use a deer foot. A deer foot 
the bristles look like the hoof of a deer foot. Okay, so you see that? This is the long end and the short end. The long end is the toe, the short end is the heel. I'm going to load the toe and when I tap, pretend this is, oh here, well, let me do my piece this way. I'm gonna tap on a little bit of an angle so I'm using more of the toe. I'm not this way. I'm kinda like this. Because I want it to be um, light and airy. I don't want it to be, I don't want it to be um, um, solid. That's the best way I can put it. I want it to be, when I tap at the edges, you see over that little fuzz there? That's because I'm light, I'm not this. I'm gonna do it this way so you can see it better. I'm not smashing it, I'm right on the tip. Okay, right on the tip of my bristles. So let's put out a little bit of burnt umber, black. Okay. And Hansi Yellow Light if you don't have any. Ooh. Okay, so burnt umber, black. You might need a little bit more. Don't put them into each other, just put them near each other. And Hansi Yellow. Hansi Yellow Light. Now, I'm going to use two different brushes because when you have the brown on your brush and you add yellow to it, you'll get a greenish tint, and I don't want that. If you only have one deer foot, what you're gonna do is make sure it stays dry, make sure your paper towel is dry, because that makes a difference, and when we get to the yellow, really, really wipe it out, okay? So you'll, you won't have that green tone. Sorry, I couldn't find my paper towels my paper towel as well. Okay, so I'm going to pick up, let me throw this away. You're getting a step by step of everything I'm doing. Move this over so you can see what I'm doing. First step, the toe, remember what I said. I'm gonna take the toe and you can't tell but I don't know if you can. Just my paint is to right there. So I'm just on the toe. And I'm lightly up and down. I'm going to base the whole center. Now, you see, if we just came to here, you see that line? So now it looks like it's a connecting line as opposed to it's part of the flower. So I'm lightly going over the edge. And see how I'm fuzzy? Can you see that? And I'm here. And whoops. And I'm here. Okay. I am using a little bit more paint. Okay. We'll give it a second to dry. And the only reason I'm letting it dry is because I want it to be a little more solid than this. If this was the color I wanted, I would work immediately so that I'm wet because now the, the next colors will be wet and wet into each other. So I'm going to dry it because I want it to be solid and then I'll go in and I'll put another coat and then I'll detail it while it's wet. Okay. Just a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfectly dry. Or completely dry. Okay. So I'm using the same brush. I have not... Now this brush... What can you use if no burnt umber? Um, you can use Esfaltum. You can use Espresso. You can use the color you used on your um, stamping. This brush is dry. Always use this brush dry. If it's wet, what happens is the bristles kind of get soggy 
and even if you try to dry them, the paint just gets really blobby. So always use a deer foot dry. After you're done, you can wash it. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up my burnt umber again because again, I want it darker. So you see the difference? Okay. And here. It's a better color. Now, same brush. I'm not cleaning it. I have burnt umber on it. I'm going to pick up some carbon black. Very little black gets really dark really fast. And along the outside edge, I'm going to add some black. I'm very light. See how light I am with my touch? And I'm turning so my hand is comfortable. Now, if you need to blend, take this end, the heel of your brush, and just where the two colors meet, just tap them. You may not need it. I'm just showing you so that you know that you have that alternative. Now, if you need to wipe out your brush, wipe out your brush. If you have another brush on the toe, pick up some Hansa. Whoops, and you know what that means. Because I'm so light there. Now, all I'm doing off camera is I'm just wiping out this brush because my burnt umber dried. So I'll come in and I'll just tap some burnt umber in there. So that I'm wet, I'll pick up my yellow and I'll tap some in. Can you see? Now I can get as light as I want. That's better. Now I have this line between them. So again, I'm going to take the heel. And I'm just where they meet. I'm going to tap that out. So now it looks like all part of one center. You see that? If you want to add a little bit of white to it, you can. Not too much. Now if you need to, go back. And with the dark, blend it in. And then I have my center. Okay. That's better. And after you're happy with your center, then you'll come in and you'll wash your brushes. And if you have a brush basin with the ridges in them, always pull one way, not two ways. Pull from the outside in towards the center. So you're going up the hill of the ridges. If you go both ways, you'll break the bristles at the ferrule and your brushes will be no good in no time. So now, I'm gonna show you something. My brush, I cleaned it and I dried it. So if I pick up paints and you see how now I can't get a light and airy area let me do black so you can see better because it's wet and that's just what happens when you have wet bristles so always use that brush dry okay okay now yeah, I'm happy with that you will Oh, we have time. So, I'm going to take a flat brush, any flat brush. This is a 12, but you can use a 4 or a 6. I'm going to take Burnt Umba. Now, you have on your line drawing, you have the area that you're going to do. I kind of just eye it, and I go right over. So, see how I'm going right over? my flower or my center or whatever's in the way so that I have an even edge. Now I do my edge before I do my stroke work 
because I want my stroke work to be within within the area, not the outside of the keyhole. Now, that's one coat. Eventually, I'll put another coat on. So I'm not too concerned about that right now. But this will give me my guide. I just make this a little thicker so that it matches up here because of where my petal was. Okay. So I'm here. And I'm just... Now if you have this drawn in, you can do this after you varnish so that if you make a mistake, it'll come right off. If you're not drawing it in, you need to put it in so that your stroke work can go within the interior of your keyhole. Okay. And I never know where my stroke work is going to fall. So see this petal I painted all the way to the edge. So I'll just follow this around. It's getting a little thin there. Now if you have a four or a six and you hold your bristles right to the edge, it will be the same length. Or maybe that's a, let's see, this is a four. So if you hold your brush right at the edge, it'll be the same width. I know you can't understand me. In person you can. It'll be the same width all the way around. Okay, so you're here, and you're down. And I'm not going to worry about the second coat right now. Because like I said, my stroke work, I want to be on the interior of the keyhole. Sometimes my words don't come out the way I want. So if I'm confusing you, I'm sorry. And I'm here. Okay. So now I have my border. One more coat will do it. But I'm pretty even all the way around. give you a minute to do that. Okay. Burnt umber. The rim around the outside is burnt umber. So just get just get enough of a border so that you know your strokes are not going where you don't want them. Okay, so my stroke work. You're going to need burnt umber. You could do straight sap green if you want. I kind of tip it in burnt umber. Okay. Excuse me, again, just to tone it. And you're going to need metallic gold. Now, that said, if you have a different color, that's fine. If you want a different color, that's fine. If you don't like metallic, that's fine. If you want only metallic, <laughs> that's fine. I'm more concerned with you doing the technique versus the colors. So the colors are totally whatever makes you happy. Okay. What else can you use for what, Emily? Okay. So you're going to use a liner. Oh, you're welcome, Marie. I'm glad you came. I hope you painted. Okay, so... I'm taking my liner and I'm heavy loading. 
when I say heavy loading, look at how much paint I have on there. It's a lot of paint. I'm going to pick up some sap green. I'm going to pick up some burnt umber. And I have a lot of paint on there, which is contrary to everything we do when we use a liner. Okay. Then I'm going to come in and where I want my stroke, I'm starting on the outside of my stroke and pulling in. So my brush is pressure and I'm releasing pressure as I'm pulling so that I have a heavy area at the end of my stroke and I have a thin area. I'm starting with pressure and as I pull, I'm releasing pressure. Okay, heavy load and once you don't put your hand in it. And you can see how much paint I have on there. I have pressure and you see how I'm releasing my pressure. Heavy load. Now you don't have to have the same strokes as me. You don't have to have them in the same place as me. Mine don't always end up in the same place. When I did this piece it didn't even have strokes and then I added them because it was a little boring. Okay, heavy load, heavy load. Now again, watch your hand here. Okay, so I'm gonna move to the side. Pressure, I'm gonna show you something. Now, let's not put any pressure here so I can show you how if you don't get a good stroke. So see how I don't have a good ball here? I have a nice thick stroke at the ends. If you don't have that, if you don't have that, that's because you didn't put enough pressure on your brush as you were doing it. So just go back in. This is the cheating way. Take your heavy loaded liner and round it out. Okay. So if you, while you're learning and you're practicing your stroke work, that's how you fix it. Okay, so now I'm really heavy. Okay, so I'm really heavy. So my strokes, you can see them, they're still really wet. I'm going to pick up some gold. I'm going to have metallic gold. And I just want to add some gold to it. So I'm going to come in. And I'm just going to drag some gold in. I'm not as heavy because I don't want to take over the whole stroke. I just want to add some gold in there. And the, what the gold will do is because it's got a yellow tone, it'll pull it into the flower. Color wise. It'll pull everything together. And I'm here. And it, I want you to be wet when you do this so that it doesn't necessarily look like it's sitting on top. I did not go all the way from the end to the tip. I'm just bringing it in spots of it. Can you see that? So pretty, right? Now, if it were me, I would wait until I was dry and I would varnish it and then I would go in and I would paint the edge. That way you can come in with your brush and you can just clean up where you want to. You can take your finger and pull it off. That's just me. But if you're comfortable with it, you can do it before. Also, make sure you erase. Um, okay, so let me come down here. You see how I have graphite lines here? Get this out of the way. I'll just come in before I varnish. And you see? And with fluid acrylics, it comes out from even underneath. So here's a graphite line. You can see that. Come in with my eraser. And I'll just erase that away. Okay? So before you varnish, don't do it until your strokes are dry because you will, I guarantee, you will pull your paint and you don't want that. 
Okay, so I'll quickly go through this. We started with a plain background. We stamped our background, then we antiqued. We base coated. More water gives you a lighter color. We shaded our separations. We shaded our bases. We highlighted our top edges. We reinforced our separations so that we had darker separations and we had lighter separations. We tapped in our center with a deer foot. This might need a little more yellow. So if you have that, see how it turned green? I don't think I have another deer foot here. Okay. So don't watch me because I'm going to cheat a little. And I'll just tap in a little more yellow. So it's a little yellower than greener. When you put the yellow on the brown, that's what happens. Okay. I made it a little bit, a little bit yellower. That's better. Okay, so if you don't like your color, you can see it was dry, but I can go back and just add a little bit of yellow to it. So that fixes my center. I painted my border before I did my stroke work so that I made sure my stroke work was on the interior of my design. Okay, and then you'll go back and you'll put another coat here. Make sure before you varnish, you're erasing. Okay, I don't wanna do it because I will smudge it and then, okay, so here, let me just show you something. See how this is under my paints? I'll come in real carefully. Uh, look, made a liar out of me. That one didn't come off, but it came off the background. They've been coming off. Okay, so that's our September piece. I will give you a sneak peek at October. October is, I wrote it down, huh, October 14th. That's what we're going to do. I gotta wait for it to come off delay so that I can make sure it's on the screen. Aw, thank you, Sylvia. I wanna see them. So this is October. I'll come down a little. October 14th. I will put it's I think it's on the library website already. Um there's three ghosts. There you go. And I stenciled Happy Halloween. I will put it on my Facebook within this week so that it'll be there. And then in November we'll do some fall things and yada, yada, yada. All right. Well, if anybody has any questions after the fact, just... Type it in the comments or send me a private message. I will answer. I generally get notifications when there's comments, so I will go back and answer. I'll answer anything that came up tonight. And that's my big story. I hope you all had a wonderful time. I hope you learned. I hope that all of you that painted loved here. Let me put this in here. So it's not just looking at my desk work. Um... I hope that you all learned something about fluid acrylics. You learned about antiquing. We had a couple of things. So I thank you all for coming. And uh, we're done a few minutes early. Thank you, Virginia, for coming. And um, I will see you all. I believe the beginner class, which is a steak that I bought at Walmart, is... October 7th.
So we have October 7th and October 14th. Okay. In the meantime, stay safe. Have a happy few weeks. And practice, practice, practice. If anybody has any questions about anything, always message me. All right, guys. Have a good night. Let me turn around now. You can see me. Have a good night.